In this video, I'm going to show you Rank Boost, an AI SaaS product that I've been building. Now, Rank Boost helps you generate high quality content. Emphasis on the phrase high quality. The reason being is there's so many uh, content generating websites that are basically GPT wrappers. And the only issue with that is ever since Google's new update, a lot of those articles will get your website flagged and will not help you rank. In fact, they'll do the opposite. You might even get blacklisted. With Rank Boost, we take a very methodical approach how we generate your articles. And we also give you the options to massage them so you create high quality content at a much faster scale easier than ever before. Now, we're all developers here, so I wanna share with you the infrastructure of how Rank Boost AI works, and then I'll give you a quick demo. So a couple of features that Rank Boost has is it allows you to generate articles by giving it a title, a title plus an outline, like an outline of an article, keywords, and that encompasses our article generation section. But we also have two core features called SEO Heist and SEO Beacon. SEO Beacon, basically, you can give uh, rank boost your competitor's sitemap and it'll scan through your competitor's sitemap and show you uh, what blog posts have launched and every single day it does a refresh and checks and it lets you know whenever new blog post has been posted you also get email notifications which is pretty nice and the reason why we do this is it allows you to keep track of your competitors what content they're posting so you can sort of understand uh, what content is working for them etc etc but we also have this feature called SEO heist which allows you to rewrite an article that someone else has written essentially let's say someone's written an article you like the title and the structure that they have you give the URL to Rank Boost, and Rank Boost will take that information, rewrite it, make it more valuable, make it more high quality. And those are the core features that we have. Now, one thing about Rank Boost is it what makes it different is the articles are generated in a very methodical approach, right? We use various AI models to research, to plan, and to write. So we aren't just prompting GPT, you are an AI writer, uh, make sure you write high quality, this, this, that, SEO friendly. That's not what we do. First and foremost, whenever you're trying to generate an article, um, an agent that does research is fired off. So it does research, and the research that it does is it checks um, live information, like what is current information. It checks the search intent. It makes sure that whatever the person, whatever article you want generated is, is valuable, is up to date, um, is for today, right? And then there's a planner that plans and architects uh, the article. And then there's a writer. And believe it or not, different AI models do different things better. We don't just use one single AI model for everything because each AI model based on our tests has different strengths and weaknesses, uh, which um, is a great thing to know now that you know. But in terms of infrastructure, this is how it works. We have Next.js for the front end and the back end. We have Python and Flask for the main core functionality, like the planning, the writing, the researching, all that type of stuff happens in a Python plus Flask server. And then we have Superbase Postgres as our database. And then we have a separate payment server written in Alicia and Bun. And then we use Stripe for payment processing. Now you might find it interesting that we don't have we don't use Next.js as the full backend uh, logic layer. And the reason is two things. First and foremost, when you deploy to Vercel, Vercel I believe gives you like 10 seconds, uh, maybe a little bit more on the pro plan for um, API tasks or jobs essentially. And you need a separate server in order to you know, manage that, maintain that, make sure things go well, because a lot of the processes do take a little bit of time, right? But we still utilize Next.js's backend as a layer of protection. So essentially how this works is, let's say someone goes on the site, requests to generate an article. This request is uh, fired to the backend, right, to the Next.js backend. This backend then communicates with our Python plus Flash server. And the reason I did this for you might be like, why not just directly to the Python or Flash server? I wanted to have that extra layer of protection just in case someone wanted to be funny and mess with our APIs or do anything of that nature. I just wanted to have that extra layer of protection. And so the front end has no communication with the Python slash Flask app. The, the front end has no communication with Superbase, right? Not even the Next.js back and has any communication with the super base right so th this is how we structured it just wanted an extra layer of protection now the python uh, plus flash servers where the researching the planning and the writing all happens this is where the core logic happens the queuing the job tasks all that type of stuff right and in super base is our database postgres that's where we uh, have all the information the article information all that type of stuff payment information and I use Alicia JS plus bun for the payment server. So it's very interesting when someone comes on the front end, comes on the site and requests to make a payment, 
right? That uh, takes them to a Stripe URL, a Stripe payment link. That Stripe payment link, when someone makes a payment, uh, Stripe fires a webhook in the Alicia JS plus Bun server, and that webhook then uh, makes uh, Alicia JS uh, fire uh, writing to the super base to the database. So we write that information to the database, and then that is then read uh, to the front end. So the front end has no access to the payment server. The only thing the front end does it just uh, generates a, a payment link, right? Like I think they're called session links, whatever it is, right? So this is the infrastructure. This is how I have it set up. Um, now a lot of people be like, you could have just had the payments on next on next JS, and I could have, uh, true. But a, I wanted to learn Alicia and Bon, uh, and b, I, I really do like separating webhooks, especially important webhooks, because you have to understand. Let's say someone goes on the site and then they generate. Uh, they click on, you know, Stripe, they're on the Stripe page, and then the site goes down for some reason. And they make a payment. Now, because the site has went down, so does the backend APIs go down, so does the webhook. So that means a payment is just registered, but the webhook doesn't catch. Now, the, this is a minor thing. You can fix this, you know, by just inputting it manually. But in my previous uh, startup, we had an issue. It was a Web3 startup. We had an issue with payments and webhooks for failing. So I just make it a rule of thumb. I'm going to separate my payment server or any other core important webhooks that I need. So this is the infrastructure. Let me give you a quick demo. So this is how the landing page looks, right? Very clean, very simple. Uh, still a lot of changes to make. I can click on get started. I'm then greeted with this dashboard right here. It basically gives me an overview of what's going on. Um, and if I click on projects, I can see uh, what projects I've started. This is an article I just generated. Um, it's complete, so we can click it right here. And you can see, again, these aren't very short articles. These are very well-detailed, well-written, well-researched articles. And one of the things that we do is we give you the ability to edit them, right? So I can, if you can see here, it says the Bible, a testament to accuracy and reliability. I can go here, remove this. Scroll down, hit submit, toast notification pops up and go back to article and it updates, right? And something that's cool is you can share these so I can share this article with someone else to read and then I can copy this link. I can paste it here and now I have a public version where I can share this with somebody. They can check it out. Pretty cool. Pretty awesome. And then this was the beacon feature I was talking about. So I just um, before I recorded the video, I beaconed this site. And this is all the blog posts they have generated. This is all the blog posts that they have. Again, every single day this can update. I can even fetch now if I wanted to. Um, and it's now fetching an update for the sitemap. And if there's something new, updated, update it. If I wanted to generate an SEO heist, I can write the name, you know, uh, what do I want to call the heist, name of the project, link of the URL I want to heist, hit submit. And I'll generate a simple article just to show you guys. So let's web development let's just call our project web development and let's generate why nextjs is better than plain react and i'm going to hit submit and it's going to be submitting and then it's a success uh, articles being generated so if i go on to projects i see that web development is in pending state right now so this pro progress indicator will update um, as the article is being generated, but let me just continue to show you rank boost. So you can generate by title, title plus subheading, keywords. You can also generate categories and call to actions. And the reason why you'd want to generate these is when you're creating your articles, you can add what categories you want uh, these articles to be categorized in. You you can, you know if you want to add a CTA to your articles, um, a call to action to your articles. Again, you can do that easily, and you can create as many of these as you want. Now, what's sick about Rank Boost is we use one API key. We use Open Router. If you watch my previous one of my previous videos where I share with you three AI tools that I, we use, Open Router is one of them. And the reason why Open Router is so clutch is it gives you access to all the AI models. Now, in Rank Boost for in particular, since we use multiple AI models, it's kind of hard to ask people for like four different API keys. But with Open Router, all you need is one. You fund one and uh, us as rank boost we have access to all the llms all the models that exist very insanely sick tool the rate limits are amazing 
um, and this is why rank boost uh, uses open router and then we have this clean dashboard where you can track your beacons your latest projects how many projects you have how many beacons you have how many articles you've generated and then here you can track how many uh, credits you have so i have eight credits left um, i generated two articles so far and then if i check back on the article that we were generating it's at 46 percent. i'll come back to when it's 100. so the article is finished generating let's check it out see the progress here is complete why next.js is better than plain react in 2024 let's just see unmatched seo capabilities developer experience and productivity next.js is not only powerful but also developer friendly it's file-based routing system simplifies the development process making it easy to define routes and manage complex routing scenarios so i like this article and if you wanted to make it better because again ai can never be perfect you can head on to the editor let's say i don't like the conclusion i'm just going to delete the entire conclusion right i'm going to click submit and if i go back to the article guess what conclusion is gone and that's pretty much it that's rank boost let me know what you think of my AI SaaS product. I plan on creating more AI content. So I just wanted to start off with this video right here. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't. We're growing every single day. I appreciate everyone's support. And until the next video, you have a blessed day.